Um, yeah, bringing numbers to journalists is definitely what we want to do. And Robert set me up perfectly. He's talking about time spent on articles, which is really a big deal to us. Um, I'm basically going to talk to you about how we see analytics and what we want to do to correct what we think are some of the endemic problems in the measurement that's happening right now. So I'm, I would love to talk to you about some of the ethnographic research that I did personally. Um, you know, understanding newsrooms, some of the problems, some of the workflows, how we boiled it all down to these, these different personas and then built a dashboard around them. But I think some of the really um, compelling information that we've got for you is in some of these data points that our data science team um, helped uncover as well. So we spent a long time just trying to figure out how audiences actually consume news online, and we came up with some very interesting things. So first of all, 34% of people that hit your page don't actually engage with your content at all. So the next time you're looking at that number around page views, right, think of a third of those or people who came, didn't actually read anything, loved your headline, loved the shit out of your headline, <laughs> but they didn't actually read anything, okay? Um, what are they viewing? So when they actually get there, what's the percentage of the article that they actually viewed? Okay, so this here, this fancy little histogram, along the bottom is measuring the percentage of the article read so we've got a bunch of people, this is consistent with the previous slide, right? They bounce right away when they hit the top of the page. Then you've got a bunch of people who, uh, the majority read about 60%, and then you've got uh, the next highest bar of all of them are the people who read to the end of the content. Now you notice that says 100% down here. How do you get to 120? This is just our way of saying this is the end of the content. This is the comments, uh, the related stuff. So people do tend to scroll a little bit afterwards. But this is also really interesting for us in just understanding how people consume content. Um, and then the next thing that we looked into was, OK, well, what are the ways that we can segment and look at audience? What are some of the attributes that they have? And what defines them? And, and one of the, most, um, one of the easiest and, and most definitive aspects of who they are is where they come from, OK? Not geographically, but from a refer standpoint. So what's the traffic source, right? So here we've got return rate by traffic source, OK? Um, so about 80% of those who come to a site direct will come back within a week. That's what this bar is, direct traffic. Does everybody here know what direct traffic is? Yeah, and we do it that way. If you're familiar with web analytics, there's a slightly different definition of direct traffic, which includes, I don't know how they got to the site. And it could be things like IM uh, clients or email or tweet deck or things like that. And that's what we call dark social now. So direct, this really is home page traffic. So what we do is we look at your site and we know, okay, this is the landing page. Anybody who comes to that we'll call direct. If people come in sideways through tweet deck, we'll identify that as dark social. Anyway, uh, dark social is number two, okay? So this is the second best return rate. You've got news.google.com, we've got Google, Facebook, Twitter, a few other ones. These are all the major refers. You see this across every site that we look at. The same refers over and over again, but the return rate is different. So this is where we're trying to add in this qualitative aspect of, okay, what, what, not all audience is the same. They're not all equal. Which ones actually show a higher propensity to come back? And that is key for the dashboard, which I'll show you right after this. So last data point, engagement and propensity to return. So this is engaged time on this side, okay? And this is uh, the return rate, the probability of coming back next week. We've got a very telltale curve, right? The people who spend the most time reading, way more likely to come back. And it's a very simple story. I think it speaks for itself. So this found its way into our dashboard. And if I can find it, oops, I just about trashed somebody's presentation. Tell you what, hold on a sec. the nickname that my boss gave me, Canada. I'm from Canada. My name's Adam. <laughs> What's going on? Okay. You didn't see any of those numbers. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, that's the, the old dashboard. 
Uh, behold the new dashboard. So this is still in development. How am I doing for time, by the way? You're okay. Okay. So uh, people are working away on this right now, pushing code. This thing could collapse on me at any time. But I'm excited to show you guys because if we've looked at some of these things that really matter, um, we're talking about engaged time and being really influential, uh, or a big influence of return rate. Um, we're talking about the traffic sources that matter. So I'm going to walk you through where they show up. So up here in the top left, we've got concurrence, the number of people on your site. That's the quantity uh, metric. Super important. We obviously want that to be as high as possible. But the two below it are getting equal prominence in the dashboard because they're the quality metrics. Recirculation, we're calling that anybody who's on a second or more page in their visit. So they came to your site, they read an article, and they've clicked them from that to another article. All right. So 17% of your visitors are currently on a second page. That's a key metric. Uh, and this other one is engaged time. So how much time do they actually spend reading? Engaged time is, is different than other engaged times and other analytics tools because it's how much time they actually spend reading the content, not opening the page with a bunch of other stories. It gets hidden behind a browser tab. Somebody goes to get a coffee, they come back, and then they start reading again. We know when somebody's at their computer actively scrolling, actively typing, maybe in a comments section, watching video, and we count that alone as engaged time. So it's much more accurate. Um, and then over here on the traffic sources side, we've traditionally broken things down by social, direct, links, and search. We've now got a new way of breaking that down called conversion quality. So we're taking these, uh, we've got three categories for it. For Gizmodo, they have everybody falls into either average converting or high converting, and these are separated by that return rate that I was talking about before. So anything that's high returning, these are people coming from sources that have a very high propensity to come back next week. And this is important because you know, we all celebrate sometimes when we get picked up by drudge maybe, right? And the floodgates open, the traffic swarms, and the dial goes crazy, and that's awesome. But guess what? There maybe are a low converting or a medium converting site. Okay? That means those people are probably the mercenary traffic that is out for that, that one article and, and not likely to come back again. But then you've got these other ones down here that maybe aren't sending high volumes of traffic, but the return rate is awesome. So what we're trying to get people to do here is say, get as much of your content through that, that channel as you can, because those people do tend to come back. So those are two ways that we're trying to incorporate audience development and audience loyalty into the dashboard. Uh, Feedly, yeah. And then up in the average converting for Gizmodo, we've got Dark Social, Mobile Facebook, Kodaku, Gawker, and Lifehacker, which are, is, you know, speaks to Gawker's strategy with the, the network. It's a super strong strategy. Um, even here within the top pages, we're trying to point out pages that have, are doing a good job of bringing in loyal people and keeping them. Other stories that have a higher percentage of new people, okay? And that kind of, uh, is broken down over here as well. So we've got bars that reflect new, returning, and loyal. And you need a degree of parity on there if you're building an audience, okay? There's sites that subsist purely on new traffic every day. I don't know how they do it, but I only see new people who have never visited the site before. And then you see other sites that have almost all loyal. They have great loyalty, but they're not actually acquiring any new people. Could be for a few different reasons. A lot of uh, small regional sites have that problem. You know, they've got everybody in the city or the, in their locality coming, but not too many people outside. So Gizmodo's actually got some good looking numbers from that standpoint. Uh, and what else? We've got a, you know, location in here, which is something that we didn't before. For any of these values, you can do something like this, uh, which is essentially like a pivot, okay? So now we're saying these are the stories that are most, most interesting to new people, right? And everything on the dashboard updated, including the numbers of engaged time, how much time are the new people engaged for, even from a, from a mobile to desktop split. And this is really interesting, too. This is a, this is a pretty high number for mobile. Um, and you can even load them up. I want to see all the new people coming from social sources, let's say. Um, doesn't want to work. There's dark social, at least. So now you've got 766 people new from a dark social source. 
I love demoing with the Gawker Network stuff. <laughs> Always fun. Any questions? Uh, you have to put like a piece of code into WordPress to, to get this service? Yeah, it's absolutely comp uh, compatible with WordPress, any site. It's, it's a very simple implementation. Uh, it's a couple lines of JavaScript, and uh, boom, it's, it's the dashboard. It takes us some time to get context. We provide benchmarks on all this data. So we're really trying to call out if you're having a good day or a bad day. It takes us some time to learn that. But you can be up uh, pretty quick. I, I know that um, I think I've read some, I think Alex Madrigal had written about the dark social in the context of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. What have you guys been able to discover about its power of email and dark social relative to social sharing? Well, I think in that slide that I started with, the return rate is just awfully high with it, right? Um, I mean, we have so much certainty around the fact that it really is people who are, are taking the time to share with their colleagues, but just not through the tweet button. And that's kind of a more intimate sharing experience and could explain why you get people, uh, you get such high volumes of traffic that way and also why people tend to, uh, to, to, to come back because it is a experience that was endorsed by somebody you know, right? And I'm wondering a couple of the typical strategies you're seeing um, in terms of how people respond and, and act on this info. So are they sort of pulling the stories at the bottom that are just, that no one's looking at? Are they, you know, commissioning additional stories on the stories that are generating the most interest? Right. What are the kinds of ways in which they're acting on this? So. We kind of built this for four newsroom personas. One's the homepage editor. And we have a different tool, actually, that is a, called the heads-up display. And it's an overlay on your homepage. So you can manage that in real time. So those guys live and die by that. And that's, that's super effective for just making sure the homepage is doing its job, pushing people into the site. We look at editors who are just trying to figure out the editorial plan. Uh, we look at, uh, and then the other two are, are the production teams, who use this quite a lot to jump on content that they didn't expect to take off. So if you're working at a news organization that has like two or 300 or 400 or more pieces of content going out a day, you can't take the time to, to make every page hand dipped in related links and video and you know it has art added to it and it's really like a, a nice production piece. So if you look at this, it's like, oh wow, I didn't think the underwear story would actually do it today, but it did. <laughs> so then as a producer, you're onto that page as soon as it starts to take off, making sure that you get that recirculation number as high as you can, keep people moving through on that story, right? Let's see how good that one's doing, for example. So that one's at 5%. So somebody has to be on this, right? And we're at, once this dashboard is finished, we'll be calling that out, saying 5% is no good. You gotta, you gotta be on top of that. And then the other group is the audience development group, right? They have to be the ones that are thinking about where does this content go that it gets in front of the, the audience that is the right fit for my stuff. Not grow audience at all costs, but the people who really seem to be receptive to my stuff. Can you talk about your revenue model? Yeah, it's, uh, it's essentially concurrence based. So um, we do have uh, uh, seats as well, but we charge by concurrence. So the bigger your site, um, the higher the price. and um, depending on how many people you have in your organization that need some level of customization, we charge for that too. Any more questions? Do you know what's the impact of having the dashboard on the people actually making the news? Um, how, do you, how do they use it? Uh, is, is there an impact on what mm -hmm. they do or something like that? There's absolutely an impact. So I think it's, Fundamentally, the awareness of trying something and then being, and, and not having to just go by your gut and fly blind. It's being able to try something and see if it worked, right? And that could just be as simple as a headline change. You know, you spent, uh, you slaved away on the article, but the headline just wasn't quite right. One tweak, and you can see a response in the dashboard. Or it can be more prolonged. People who have these dashboards up get a sense of whether these numbers are where they need to be or not, and where they need, what they need to do to get these numbers where they, where they want. Um, editorial planning, uh, obviously it has a huge impact on that. Just understanding what are the stories that are going to appeal to the different audiences coming in. I've seen products that are actually letting you do like A-B testing on headlines. Yeah, yes. 
Um, do you guys have any plans of rolling something like that out where you could actually do some stuff on the fly? Yeah, we, we badly want to do that as well. Um, if we do, however, it's going to be, um, as per the chart beat sort of philosophy, which would be, let's measure the downstream engagement on the story as opposed to just optimizing a headline that gets people to click. So a combination of that, um, but we'd like to for sure. Yeah. Great, yeah, last question. What do most editors do wrong? You know, the one thing that I would like to see um, some of the editors do more often is dig a little deeper into the dashboard. They tend to just fixate on this middle column of what are the top stories. And if something doesn't make the top 10, you know, it doesn't get the visibility that it needs. And that, that is both the power and the drawback of real time. Uh, what they need to do is we have a few other products that kind of summarize the day before and say, these were the stories that actually killed it but didn't quite pierce the top 10. So there's that too. You have to look at those, the ones that are kind of growling along, uh, getting great traffic all day. Um, you know, they're also, I think, this audience development is not quite top of mind in the newsroom yet. I think people are still focused on, on from a content standpoint, quality, quantity, and speed. I need more content, have a higher quality, as fast as possible. And obviously that's the number one thing, content reigns, but there's so much room for optimizing that audience, for understanding who those people are and if you've got the right fit or not. Great. Okay. What kind of clients do you have, assuming you know, your metric analysis? Any major media uh, organs? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been around for two years or more now, and I would say I think the 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 penetration is up to about 80% of all media publishers uh, in the United States. Um, you know, from New York Times to Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, ESPN, um, just about everybody is using us now. We were just at ONA um, in Atlanta a couple of days ago, and uh, our CEO, Tony, does a, uh, a pretty good job of making the rounds and, and uh, finding people who still aren't using Chartbeat, and there aren't many left. So Yes, it's a it's a monthly subscription rate. Okay, and thanks, Adam. Is yeah, it's it, it all comes down to size. Thank you. Cool. That's great. Yep. Thanks very much.